This is the Pixel 6, and I've been using it as my sort of daily point-and-shoot camera for the past three or so weeks. Here is the 10 things that have mattered to me most about this phone from the point of view of a photographer. And if you want to potentially win a Pixel 6, stick around till later in the video. So guys, reviews on this phone have been out for a little while, so we're not going to focus too much on the general phone performance specs. But there are a few things that are important to me as a user and a photographer. First of all is this phone is just seriously quick. It's actually the best Android phone I've ever used in terms of performance. Previously, whenever I've used Android, which has been quite a lot, uh, I've always sort of missed iPhones, missed how smooth iOS is, and I just don't at all when it comes to using the Pixel 6. I just genuinely absolutely love it. Next is the battery life, and again, I'm really, really happy. It was one of the original reasons I left the iPhone. I definitely consider walking around for most of the day taking quite a lot of photos and videos to be pretty demanding battery-wise for a phone, and I rarely rarely, rarely run out of battery with the Pixel. With sort of normal usage, I probably end up with maybe 30 to 40% left on the battery, and that's just kind of a normal day's usage. And the only times I've actually ever ran the battery completely flat are when I've been shooting specifically for a YouTube video, so the phone ends up being shot with like way more than I ever normally would if I was just out and about. So the version I have here is the Pixel 6. This has two lenses on. It's got a 16 millimeter super wide angle lens, and then a standard 24 millimeter equivalent lens. The flagship Pixel 6 Pro also has an 102mm telephoto, and that's actually one of the main advantages of buying that phone. The other cameras on the device are completely identical, so you're not losing any camera performance by choosing the cheaper Pixel 6. Both of the lenses on this phone are amazing and produce really good photos. On the primary 24mm camera, you're getting a 50 megapixel sensor that is pixel binning down to a 12 megapixel photo. Essentially what that means is taking a really nice rich 50 megabyte file with lots of data and information and combining that into a smaller file but you're getting a lot of benefit of that larger sensor size in the photo. This pixel binning process really does result in great photos with a high amount of detail and because of that pixel binning low light shots look really really good. We will talk about that a little bit more in detail later. With the ultra wide angle lens the sensor is 12.5 megapixels so you don't get the sort of extra benefit that you do with the pixel binning so photos won't be quite as crisp as that uh, 24 millimeter wide angle lens but after a whole bunch of testing the wide really does perform well and is actually my favorite lens to use on this phone. I do actually wish that I'd spent the extra money to upgrade to the Pixel 6 Pro because my favorite focal length to shoot at generally uh, anything above around 60 millimeters I just think it has a much nicer compression and everything looks a little bit better. The reason I didn't is I have access to other cameras bigger lenses uh, so I don't kind of actually need that 102 millimeter. But if this was, if this is your only photography device, then you might want to upgrade to that and that might want to be considered. The power of the Pixel 6, like most flagship smartphones now, is not in the hardware, it is in the software. The thing that impresses me most about the Pixel 6 is its capability to deal with crazy dynamic range situations. Obviously you've been seeing a bunch of skiing photos uh, taken out in bright sunshine on the mountains. These make for very, very hard photos just purely because of the amount of light in the scene. But time and time again you just get a perfectly exposed photo looking really beautiful on the Pixel 6. Essentially every time you take a shot the Pixel is taking multiple exposures and combining them to retain as much detail as possible. There's so much computational power going into each and every shot on this phone and it does generally just mean you get great photos almost every time you hit the shutter button. Just take a look here at this side by side shot and this is actually a video shot. One of those is from my Canon and the other is from the Pixel. I definitely think the Canon looks a little bit more natural but it is just crazy what the Pixel is able to do. Detail is really really good, noise levels look great. I think my only complaint is that the photos do actually look just a little too sharp sometimes and this kind of is an overall complaint of phone cameras in general. I think manufacturers use and add sharpness to help the size of the sensors but it can and does look quite artificial. So guys I mentioned about winning a Pixel Pixel 6. So if this video reaches 5,000 likes, I'm going to be giving away a Pixel 6 to someone who drops a comment down below. Just comment once, that's enough for one entry. I know it's a lot of likes, but I think we can do it. I have to be honest, I don't use portrait mode a lot, and this is mostly personal preference. If portraits were really important to me, I'd actually buy the Pixel 6 Pro, which gains a 102 millimeter lens, which just due to the focal length would actually give you a little bit more natural bokeh in the background of your photos. The portrait mode on the Pixel 6 is good, but it's still not 
perfect and still does have some fringing issues, this kind of really is more personal preference. If portrait mode is really important to you, I don't think you're going to be disappointed with this phone, nor do I think you're going to be delighted with this phone. I think it's kind of pretty solidly standard flagship portrait mode performance. Night photography with this camera is insanely impressive. It actually does a better job than some of my more professional cameras, and that's due to that pixel binning and multiple exposures. Low light photos are pretty famously difficult to take, especially if you have moving subjects in your photographs, but the computational power of this phone means that you can actually achieve really great nighttime looking shots very, very easily. Genuinely, it's super impressive and pretty much every time I take a shot in low light with the Pixel 6, my expectations are exceeded. The motion modes are really fun too, and what's crazy about this is that with both long exposure mode and action pan mode, these are very advanced photography techniques that one, take a lot of time to learn, but two, they also require a ton of gear. You don't have that problem anymore though if you own a Pixel, throw away your tripod, ND filter, remote controls, uh, and just tap the long exposure button or the action pan button, and you'll be able to take really great shots nice and easily. The Magic Eraser is also really cool, especially if you're not someone who's ever used Photoshop, as it really is super quick and super simple to remove blemishes or people from your photos directly on your phone with no additional software required. Video is pretty epic too. The Pixel shoots really beautiful, high quality 4K video. The stabilization is excellent as you would expect from a Google flagship device. By default, it shoots in 1080p, so I bump this up to 4K in the settings. You might not wanna do that if you're wanting to save storage space on your device but overall yeah just super happy with the video as well as the photo even as much as i love the photos that come out of this camera and the photography performance in general it's not all good there are a few negatives the camera on the pixel 6 does have a habit of making things just look hdr -y. i don't know if there's really a technical term for that because it does such an insane job at making almost all colors and brightnesses pretty visible in each photo it does come with this just compressing of of colors like you can see here and everything does just look a bit artificial there is a manual shadow control slider but it's not perfect to be honest and everything still can very easily come out looking pretty unnatural another thing and this is something which i can spot a mile off with mobile photography in general is that phones still just digitally sharpen so much i know i briefly talked about this earlier but it really is one of the biggest giveaways of mobile photography in general because there is so much processing happening to these photos the software is doing a lot of processing and adding a lot of sharpness to these stills. You can shoot RAW, which does definitely fix some of these issues, uh, or at least let you control them a little bit. However, the point of me shooting with a smartphone is for ease and ease of use. So it's just not really a great solution to be able to shoot RAW, because like I said, I have access to bigger cameras if I want to do that. If you do only have one camera and that's your phone, you might want to play around with shooting RAW though, because it does improve some of the potential output coming out of the camera. Bear in mind though, shooting RAW does mean that you lose some of the benefit of shooting with a phone, like those computational advantages, some of the dynamic range improvements, that type of thing. So we've obviously sort of deep dived into the photos, but one last thing to note, the actual biggest negative with using the Pixel 6 is actually the fingerprint scanner. The Pixel uses on-screen fingerprint reading tech, and it's just genuinely not that good. In decent light, when you can align your finger perfectly, it does normally work first try, but if you dim the screen brightness down, or maybe your finger doesn't sit perfectly in the circle, sometimes it takes several times to scan or just flat out won't work at all. I know this is a photography review, but obviously with mobile phone photography, you are putting your camera away, you are taking your phone out a lot of the times, so you're wanting to unlock your phone nice and quickly. And the fingerprint scanner is actually genuinely one of the biggest negatives of owning this phone so far for me, but that doesn't detract anything from the actual camera performance. Overall, the phone is amazing. And it's meant that I no longer feel like I have to bring bigger cameras on every single trip with me. Cameras like this, the Canon EOS R6 are big and bulky, so it's nice and convenient that I can just take my phone. In fact, I actually compared this pro camera, the Canon EOS R6, to the Pixel 6 side by side. So if you have enjoyed this video, why don't you go give that one a watch?